How's it going, you guys? Welcome back to episode number 16 of Flight Time. And yes, uh, it's been about two weeks since we've uploaded a podcast. The truth is, Ken and I, we've just been so busy in our own separate lives. Ken's been traveling. He's been working. This past week or the past two weeks, really, for me, have actually been somewhat busy for school, and I didn't really expect to get hit with that much work. So we were on a bit of hi- bit of a hiatus, uh, but we're back now. And um, so, yeah, Ken, how, how have you been over these past two weeks? It's pretty crazy, man. I feel like I've not really been home very much, you know, like it's like get off an airplane and get back on a plane or get back in a car and start driving to the next location. It's sort of crazy. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I know, I I think that these past two weeks, uh, especially with me moving into a new apartment, it's been nice to sort of step back, take a break from doing some YouTube stuff and doing this podcast stuff. It's let me really get organized. Um, and you know, uh, we don't plan to be taking these breaks. Um, often i know that we probably uploaded like 15 episodes that's been about three or four weeks and now we're going on a break don't worry this is not going to be something that is constant we're not going to continue to take these breaks um but we don't want to harp on that too much what we want to talk about today is what maintenance is required on a drone and we say this for two reasons the first the first thing that really sparked my interest in like talking about maintenance of drones is the fact that we're seeing a ton of Mavic 2 batteries swell and this is this is all stemming from I mean Ken I mean he, he was the first one to experience this uh, in fact you know that was probably what two weeks ago and then when you came up here and you were flying with me one of my batteries swelled up and I brought it back down and I looked at it and I was like whoa look at this so not only are you experiencing it but I'm experiencing it now and we've also got a buddy his name is Jin and he's texting me just the other day saying that his batteries are swelling as well so that's three individuals right there that I know I mean obviously myself I know myself pretty well um, but the other two people they got the drones the Mavic 2 pretty much as soon as they came out and now a year later we're seeing these batteries swell so it, it kind of makes me fear that these battery life cycles are only like a year and after that you might have to replace them yeah yeah so so when it first happened to me i was sort of like in disbelief like i I honestly throughout the entire duration of this past year owning the uh, mavic 2 or mavic 2s i should say and flying pretty regularly i never once stopped to think about a battery swelling not once did i even stop and think of it and uh it was it was only until I was doing a uh, a video on a house and I got a warning about my battery not being seated all the way. And I remember bringing the drone down and popping it back in, taking back off. And it was like 10 minutes later, I got the same warning. I was like, that's weird. I didn't think anything other, other than that. And then I was flying with Bill and he's like, well, is it possible your batteries are swelling? And I was like, no, no. And I looked like, I'm like, you know, because Bill said it. So I'm like, I'm going to look and see what, you know, see what's going on. And I looked, I'm like, holy crap, they're actually swelling. And then I started checking all my batteries and I'm like, crap, they're, they're all swelling. What the heck? How, how bad was the swelling? I mean, um, it was, it put it this way. It, it was at the time we were flying again, you know, we were, we were flying. I just got done landing and it was enough for Bill was probably about five feet away from me. And when I held the battery vertical to show him, he's like, holy cow, look how bad that's swelling. So he can see it from a distance and I can see it. And it was like, I was like, wow, I can't believe it was, it was swelling bad. But what's funny is it's deceiving because if you let them sit for a long period of time, they stop, you know, they're, they're, they're not like they sort of, you know, shrink, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah. They retract. And so it can be deceiving because then you can start flying again. And then they'll start swelling again. So that's the dangerous part of these batteries. And just to clarify, uh, anybody who's wondering why you wouldn't want to fly with a swollen battery, first of all, it's unstable. Like uh, maybe one of the cells could totally go out. Maybe all of the cells totally go out. But the bigger fear is that if the battery expands too much, it could totally pop out of the of the drone itself. And obviously, you need a drone or you need a battery to power the drone to make it fly. Um, so if if the battery pops out, your drone and your battery is going to come crashing from the sky. So that's why with me, I wouldn't even. 
I wouldn't even risk flying with a swollen battery, not only because I don't want my more expensive drone falling from the sky, but also if you're flying in an area where you could do damage to property or maybe even people, um, that's just a risk that I'm really not willing to take. I'd rather recycle the battery and purchase a new one. Um, so the, the warranty on these batteries is six months. And we're sitting pretty much a little over a year after these drones are released, and we're seeing a ton yeah. of batteries swell, uh, and that's definitely not convenient. There's a lot of there's a lot of different pieces of the drone, and and different pieces are warranted um, for longer periods of time, but the battery is only six months, and that's pretty short compared to a lot of other uh, components that we're seeing from DJI. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe they knew that this was going to happen. Maybe they knew that in terms of longevity, these batteries just, aren't going to be the best. Just out of a curiosity, like what's a warranty on a battery if you buy it like from a phone, like a phone manufacturer like Apple? I've actually got no idea. Like you're talking about batteries in smartphones from Apple, yeah. Samsung, right? Yeah, because I'm just thinking about it in you know in terms of okay, we're we're dealing with something that, you know, is is going to be charged, right? It's it's going to be charged pretty much regularly. Uh, yeah, it's a and battery. <laughs> it's a battery, right? So you're going to charge that pretty regularly, and uh, so Apple warranties theirs for one year, okay, or five hundred or five hundred charge cycles. Okay, and you and you've got to think that these phones are definitely being put through more charge cycles than a drone battery. Right. Right. But yet it seems pretty common in the industry. And I'm just I'm, I'm talking, you know, I'm looking at like I'll tell I'll tell six months. I'm looking okay. at unique. Unique is six months on the battery. Wow. So it seems to be an industry standard for drones is six months, which I think is pretty pathetic. Yeah. You, and, you know, from consumer terms. Look, most people, I would say probably 75 percent of flyers have multiple batteries, whether that be two, three, four. Uh, I, I have four myself. I find that to be like a real sweet spot. I think that any more you probably won't need any less. You might find yourself running short from time to time. Um, but with me, I exchange batteries evenly. Like I make sure I kind of go down the line of the numbers that I have them on. So one battery isn't getting all of the flight time and one battery isn't just sitting there pretty much brand new. So I know that I've right. dispersed flights out fairly evenly across these batteries. And to think about it, you know, I probably have maybe three or 400 flights on my Mavic 2, which means that these batteries probably only have about 100 cycles, if that, not even 100 full cycles. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever looked to see what the cycles were on your batteries? Because I, I, all right, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought I had so much more, you know, on my, on my cycles. Like I thought mm -hmm. I was like, I'm like, oh, I got to easily have a hundred, you know, cycles on these batteries. But then when I went and looked, I was like, whoa, wait a second. I actually don't. I was actually pretty, pretty much shocked that, you know, there was not as many cycles as I initially had thought, it was sort of sort of crazy. So um, I'm I'm here on Air Data. I don't have my drone near me, but I've got my computer here, and this shows me um, like the data on my batteries. It, it shows you data on everything. I'd really recommend if you guys don't know what this is, Air Data, check it out. Um, let's see. On my fifth battery for the Mavic Two, I've got 57 charges. For the fourth battery, I have 88 charges. For the, let's see, for my third battery, this is the battery that swelled. I have 79 total charges. Um, and let's see, this the second battery, I have 73. So, you know, give or take 50, 80 ish charges on these batteries. Um, the third battery is the one that's that's swelling for me. I've got 109 um, flights logged on this battery and a total of 79 charges. So, um, and, and it even gives me here on this website, it says that I have had the drone in the air for a total of 19 hours and 25 minutes with this battery. No, what what is that that you're using? Air data. Um, this is a wow. This is a great that's, application. That's powerful. Yeah, it's it's a great app. So what I do is within the software, um, I match up the serial numbers. I label the batteries in here, and then over on my drone, I'll put or over on the battery, I'll put like battery three, battery four, battery five, just so I can look in here and quickly reference. Okay, battery three is in here in the software. Battery three, I'm holding. I can get an understanding of um, you know. All of the uh, all of the 
information, I guess. Uh, not only that, but it also gives you info on your drone. So again, guys, go check out um, Air Data. It, it, it's awesome. I made a video on it, gosh, probably eight eight months ago by now, but I've been using it almost every single day since because it's a great way to manage your fleet of drones. And that totally sounds like a sponsored spot, but I promise you it's not. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, 79-ish charges on a battery and it's already swelling. I mean, look, does, does DJI, when they say six months, do they also have a cycle count to go off of? I mean, look, I know that it's been past six months, but what are the cycles? So, so like, uh, let me look. You know what? I, I didn't even see. I know, I know Apple was pretty explicit about, you know, their cycle count. I mean, it states right there in the warranty terms. Uh, let me see what DJI. Yeah, and again, says, look, DJI. unless unless you were doing some serious, serious, serious flying with your drone eight hours a day, there's no chance. Well, I, I shouldn't say this, but it's very rare that you're going to be charging a battery almost every single day. Uh, you know, if you've got four batteries you're running off of, maybe use two one day so, to another day. I don't know, man. It's it's crazy to think that these batteries are swelling like this. And there's no, and that's the thing. They don't have a charge cycle. They, it just says the warranty on the battery is only six months. Okay, that's like literally, literally all it says. But I'll tell you from the experience I have had with DJI support was, you know, he asked me about the charges and I showed him and one of the batteries had 25 cycles. Mm -hmm. So wait, and I one, thought I had many more. One second. Let's take a step back. Why don't you explain the situation that you're in with DJI okay. and with these batteries? Just, just kind of okay, start from so, the beginning. So, so this is what happened, you know, after I made that video, you know, where I was flying with Bill and we were flying that, that bridge, I came home and I was like, I was like, sort of like befuddled by the whole situation. And I took all my batteries and I put them on a level surface. And if your batteries are swelling, the easiest way to tell if your Mavic battery is swelling, set it down on a level surface or a flat table and just see if it teeters side to side. If it teeters side to side, your battery is beginning to swell. And depending on how much it rocks side to side, like a cradle, is how bad your battery is. Mm -hmm. So I videoed all the batteries teetering. And initially I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to have to buy new batteries. I had no intention of getting them warrantied. I thought I was like, I thought I was beat. Mm -hmm. So I tweeted DJI Global and DJI Support, and I was like, yo guys, is this normal? Should I have this many batteries that are swelling? And in probably about an hour and a half's time, somebody from DJI, a rep from DJI Support reached out to me and they were like, that's not normal. Can you give us the serial numbers and the flight information, like the cycles on it? So I sent them screenshots of everything. And then like I woke up the next morning to a phone call from somebody at DJI and they were like, uh, we'd like to have those batteries sent into us to evaluate. And I was sort of like, wait a second, you want me to send batteries that are swelling? In? I thought it was weird that they wanted things shipped. It is really weird. But apparently, but it, but apparently you can ship batteries ground via UPS, even if they're damaged. There's only one type of battery that they won't allow shipping of. And um, it's something on the Matrice. Interesting. I can't remember that. Yeah, there's only one type of battery that you can't actually ship or fly with. Um, and it and it's powers the matrices, um, TB something. But anyways, so I, sh I sent them in. I was up in Philadelphia with you. I got an email back and they were like, oh, you have to pay for these batteries. And I'm like, oh, hell no, I'm not paying for these <laughs> batteries. You asked me to send them to you because you were going to warranty them. And now you want me to like pay to get them sent back? What the heck? Yeah. So apparent, apparently it was a misunderstanding on my part because what, what happened was their automatic process triggers the batteries as they were out, out of warranty. But what actually they were doing is they were, they were trying to get them the warranty, but they automatically send an email that, you know, with a repair and a price. Okay. Because that's like the automatic system sees that that serial number is out of warranty. Mm -hmm. So then probably like the next day I got another email with tracking information on two brand new batteries. And then they went a step further because I only sent two batteries in because obviously I was going up to see you and I wanted to bring the Mavic with me. And then they sent another um, return label for the other one. So the end result is I'm getting all my batteries replaced. Awesome. You know, but you know, it's, it was, it's a weird, it's weird. Like they, they know something's up. I'm going to be completely honest with you. They definitely know something's up with these batteries because I don't think they would have did this. And it has nothing to do with that I'm doing YouTube because honestly, I'm a nobody online. <laughs> well, look, uh, let's take a step back from batteries. 
because when you're talking about the maintenance of a drone, yes, batteries are a big portion, but what about the motors? What about the camera? What about these See, other I, components of the drone? I don't know how much they really intend for these consumer drones, these portable drones to be serviced. Another thing we don't really take an account for is every time we open and close the landing gear, because those arms, those are, you know, those are, we have to unfold these Mavics all the time. That's another moving component. Mm -hmm. When you take your Phantom out, you don't unfold it. You just pop your props on unless you have a case and then you're good to go. Well, but with these, we're constantly unfolding things. That's true. And on the original design of the motors of the Phantom 4, um, they had these little tabs that, that acted as like the quick release mechanism. And I remember that after putting propellers on and off, on and off, on and off a certain amount of times, uh, those tabs would actually, I, I wouldn't say wear out, but they would get pushed down. So you would have right. to go and replace those tabs. And that's not huge, but that's just a bit of like maintenance that needs to be done on the drone. Um, so huh. look, let me let me tell a little story. Ken got his limelight. Ken got to tell his battery story. Um, now I want to tell you guys what's up with my Mavic 2 Pro. So um, let's see, I actually haven't had this drone for a full, maybe at this point in time, I've had it for a full year. Uh, but my this other is Mavic the new 2, one they sent you, right? Yeah. So, well, they didn't send me the drone they and I had to buy it. Uh, so I, I had to okay. buy another one after my other one, my first Mavic 2 Pro went down in the water. So this drone is probably just about a year old, maybe a little under a year old. Um, but I'm, I'm experiencing some pretty weird things going on with the drone. So in the morning, I was flying in the city in order to take photos of a house. And, uh, you, you know, just this is totally unrelated, but this house was really hard to take photos of just because the street was so narrow. So in order to get a nice, clean photo of the house, I actually used panoramas to my benefit. I never really experimented with panoramas all that much. But if I took one photo of the front of the house, or, or I guess, well, yeah, it's considered a house, I would only fill like, or I'd only be able to capture like one fourth of the actual home. But if I used the horizontal panorama, I was able to capture the whole thing. So that was pretty awesome. So anyway, um, wow. I'm here, I'm in the city. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of interference, but with Ocusync 2.0, especially if I'm only flying like literally a hundred feet away from me, it shouldn't be a huge issue that, um, that you know, the, the drone's right there. The, I'm, I'm not gonna get interference issues. So the drone goes up, I've got it sitting just above me, uh, not even 20 feet away. I'm shooting photos, shooting photos, and then as I go and I go up higher and I try to get the, the house with the skyline in the background, I notice that it flips into Addy mode. And I'm like, all right, that's pretty weird. I'm not in between structures. I'm really, this shouldn't be happening. So I bring the drone down uh, and I'm, I'm coming down pretty fast. It's like, what, 6.9 miles per hour. That, that's the fastest this drone can descend. And when I got to about 30 feet off the ground, I let up off the stick, but the drone just kept coming as fast as it could descend. It slammed into the ground. It bounced up, and as it bounced up, I was like, okay, I don't need this thing flying over to the right and into a building, so I shot straight up, and as I shot straight up, it still didn't it still didn't reconnect with a GPS connection. I figured it might it might be able to if I got up and away from the buildings, but it didn't. So then I had to go to a more open area and bring the drone down. So this thing basically just dive bombed into the ground without me wanting it to. Um, and it made a really loud thud. I, I went, I checked it, everything was fine. I turned it off, I turned it back on, put it up into the air. It, it maintained its GPS connection for the next two flights that I had and ever since that, uh, that incident, which I guess what now is probably about a week ago, my drone has been flying fine, but something I've noticed is that I've got these black lines running up and down my camera. So when I'm shooting photos or when I'm shooting videos, uh, you know, like the old tube TVs, how they sort of had like the black lines going from top to bottom, top to bottom. Yeah. They're very faded. They're kind of thick though. Um, I noticed that those are coming across on my screen and I said, well, all right, maybe this is just coming through the transmission signal. Like maybe I'm just seeing it here through the live view and I go and I record a video, I watch it back and those black lines are there. So something is messed up about the camera. Now, since that day that it happened, I haven't had it happen again. Like there's been none of the black lines going up and down the screen but it just scares me that I'm gonna go out to do a shoot and put the drone up and all of my footage is gonna be ruined because those black lines are in the shot. 
Um, Let so, me ask you a question. Yeah. Does this does this like make you feel different about it? Do you feel less confident with that now? A hundred percent. You know, it doesn't take much to take the wind out of my sails, I guess. I mean, even I, I remember, oh gosh, this is when I first got my license probably four or five years ago. Um, I remember getting pulled over. And after that, I was the most cautious driver for like the next week. Uh, and then after that, you know, things just went back to normal and I felt comfortable driving again. I, I wasn't constantly looking around for police. But now I, I would say I'm pretty much out of the whole period of, of being a little bit worried. But for the next couple of flights and the next couple of days, I was thinking to myself like, man, this thing could totally lose GPS co- connection again and could totally go haywire on me. So it's like I'm sitting here thinking to myself, just like the battery talk we had, like how if these batteries are swollen, don't fly. If you've got a drone that's going haywire, why would you fly it? Why wouldn't you just go and purchase another one to avoid any risk that that you know something bad could happen in the future with that drone? But then I sit there and I think like these drones just went up to seventeen hundred dollars. Like I feel like after a year, I shouldn't be exper- experiencing these problems. And here here's another thing. This is totally unrelated, totally aside from the Mavic Two uh, lineup. But Steve's Phantom Four Pro which he really didn't use all that much after he got the uh, Mavic, he put it up just to kind of do a test flight and the camera totally wasn't working. It's just been sitting in the box and out of nowhere, the camera doesn't work. Uh, so, so you've got to think like, what is the longevity of these drones? Like, do we have to replace them every year? Do we have to replace some of the parts every year? Do we have to have some sort of inspection that we need to do maybe every six months? I mean, there needs to be something that's put into place. Um, and I don't know because some people might be having great luck with their drones after two years, but for me, this drone that I've flown for probably close to 60 or 70 hours, it is now starting to crap out on me. Wow. That's, it's sort of, sort of scary, man. You know, think, thinking about it, you know, yep. like that this, this is a potential because I mean, for me, the Mavic 2 Pro has been probably the most reliable drone I've never been you know hesitant to fly in certain areas and just you know and just never really worried about it but now this sort of gives me pause and it's like makes me think like man i really hope some parachutes come out pretty pretty much sometime soon you know uh, well yeah they, they have those parachute systems uh they they are still pretty expensive i know they have one for the mavic 2 now i'm, I'm looking to hopefully get that to test on my channel which <laughs> I did that one for the Phantom, but my Phantom at the time was broken, so I didn't mind letting that thing fall from the sky in a big open field. But, uh, you know, the Mavic 2, I don't want to purposely let that thing fall from the sky. <laughs> All right, I, I agree with you. I I would not want it to fall from the sky either, but, but you know, it's, it's, one, of those, it's one of those things where it may have to be, you know, for the good of the, uh, for the good of it all, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting here, right. Uh, and I am, I'm actually looking at my Mavic 2 zoom and my Mavic 2 pro side by side. Now the Mavic 2 zoom has been flown, not even a fourth of the amount as my Mavic 2 pro. I mean, the Mavic 2 pro is like my daily flyer, I would say. Um, and looking here at the Mavic 2 zoom and the Mavic 2 pro, they look identical. It's not like one drone looks older than the other. It's not like one drone looks more used than the other. So how are we supposed to tell if something is going to go wrong with this drone? And and if something does go wrong, what's the level of redundancy that we can expect? Because I know that they've got dual barometers. Uh, they've got dual IMUs inside of these drones, but they don't have five motors. They don't have four motors so that if one of the motors goes out, you know, it, it can it can sustain itself and you can come down and land. If one of these motors just randomly goes, the drone is falling from the sky. So um, I know for me, I've gotten errors about the IMU before I've even taken off and I've had to send it in to get repaired by DJI. But have you ever gotten any sort of motor warning or has anybody maybe gotten any warning that the motor maybe wasn't in good shape? It wasn't in good health. I mean, are you... I really wish you were able to check the health of the components of your drone. I know you can look at some of the sensors like the um, gyroscope, you can look at the, uh, the compass and things like that, but once you calibrate it, then you're fine. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. One of my biggest fears, I guess, is a motor going out. You've got to think if, you're, if you've got 70 hours of flight, that's 70 hours that that motor has just spun, 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 and what happens if it goes out? Yeah, I mean, I I can't say that, you know, I've ever had something like that happen to me. I mean, 
I've had some weird anomalies happening recently that, you know, I've been, I've been sort of monitoring, but nothing, you know, no motor errors or anything like that. No, nothing that says ESC, but I mean, you got to think there's a lot of heat lately. I've been grabbing the underneath of the Mavic just to, you know, see how hot it's been getting. And what's surprising is, is it gets very, very hot. It does. There's, um, I guess it's what the heat sink or whatever is on the bottom. Uh, I mean, yep. dude, this this metal underneath does get pretty hot to the touch after a long flight. I know that uh, just for agriculture, where you don't need the most precise or high resolution maps, I've been using the Mavic 2 Pro just because it's so easy to pop up and it's got long flight time. It's it's quiet. I, again, it's just a perfect mapping drone in my opinion for agriculture. Um, and after four full batteries of just scanning, and I come down, it is it's it's hot. It's very hot. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 getting hot enough for me that it's it's giving me like room to pause and sort of think like, oh, wait a second, should you know, should I be concerned with this? Like, should it should this be something that that should be happening? Um, I I, I mean, it's it's sort of it sort of sucks. I to forget. Be honest with you. I forget who was telling me this. Either you or Steve. Um, one of you guys know somebody who flies the, the Inspire 2 for work, and they do a lot of high-end cinematography. So, uh, you know, these, these drones are flown for hours every single day. Um, I, was this you or was this Steve? Does, does this ring a yeah, bell? Yeah, so, so Air, Airwolf, um, who follows both of us, he, he flies the Inspire 2 for long, extenuated periods of time. Uh, and he, for work, well, and he I, does a lot of maintenance to it. Yeah, the way the 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 reason that I'm kind of going down this route is because uh, I, I guess because you told me this. Um, this guy has got to pretty much have maybe two or three drones where he just rotates them because one drone is getting fixed while the other is flying, just because yep. these drones are flying so much. Maybe I guess what is he being preemptive in a way of saying, well, look, this drone has been flying uh, for so and so long we should probably swap out the motors just in case or no my understanding is the last time like he typically typically it's when something's breaking like you know he doesn't go looking for you know he's not going looking for something breaking Mm -hmm. like some something something is finding you know finding him basically and he's like you know the inspire is great but he's like stuff breaks all the time and i was like really i was like i thought it'd be a pretty awesome drone he's like nope stuff stuff breaks a lot He's like, and then you got to, and it's always at the worst time and then you got to go and fix it. He's, but, but the only good blessing with the Inspire series is, is that a lot of the parts are modular. Yeah, that's nice. It's not like a Mavic where, where you can't fix it. The shell, everything comes apart in the Inspire. The Inspire is honestly one of the drones that is meant to be serviced. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense because it's so expensive. But it's a long-term investment though. Yeah. It's, it's so expensive. I mean, you look at, uh. You look at these computers now and how they've gotten thinner, thinner, thinner. They're they're hard to replace. Even these phones, right? Uh, I know that I've cracked the back glass on my phone a number of times. I go into Apple. I've got Apple Care Plus. Rather than replace the back glass, they give you a brand new phone. And I guess they just recycle the other yeah. one. They take it apart. Whatever they do with it, um, you know, it's it's. It's like these drones that are larger might be easier to service, but a drone like the Mavic 2 or maybe even the Spark at that point in time, it might just be tough. And at, 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 at a certain time, it's like, all right, let's just recycle this and give the person a new one. Um, yeah. But, but look, I, I, think that we, I think that we touched on a lot. I think that's where we're going to end it. I would love to know a little bit um, for those of you guys watching, if you're on a platform where you can comment or maybe if you just want to reach out to Ken and I through Twitter, uh, let us know what you guys do in terms of maintenance of your drone. I mean, look, there's things you can do like analyze for cracks. You can, um, you know, uh, check your flight logs. You can look at all the different sensors. But do you do anything like like over and above in order to make sure that your drone comes back and doesn't have any issues? Because I know that right now my Mavic 2 has me a little bit uneasy, uh, almost to the point where I like want to be ready to purchase a second one just in case this one is like getting to a point where it's unflyable. That's such a bad. That's such a bad feeling, though. I, I know, and you know what? Steve was saying the same thing. Like it just makes him feel uneasy. And I think that this conversation we had right now is really going to wrap in well with a topic and a conversation that I want to have for the next episode. Um, and uh, yeah, so if if you guys, you know, we 
We've been MIA for two I weeks. I want to put out a disclaimer. I want to put out a disclaimer, though, because this feels like very forum-ish, like when I was on forums. You know, just bear in mind, too, guys, like just because we're having problems or had problems doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have problems. And it's not don't take this as, you know, we're totally, you know, gloom and doom. Yeah. It's just we're sharing our experience, you know, from a long term, you know, I guess, vantage point. This is something that you don't typically hear on- online or on YouTube because all you hear is about that. You know that honeymoon stage where everybody gets a new product and they love it it's great it's wonderful and you never hear about anything after that point so this is the real the long-term nitty-gritty that's important to somebody who's dropping fifteen sixteen hundred dollars on one of these drones yeah and look there's a lot of people like photographers and videographers out there that might turn to their drone like every like, like, like once a week maybe uh every other week maybe once a month in order to get a specific shot so maybe their drones aren't flown as much whereas i can say that ken and i fly our drones for 10 hours a week maybe if that um so yeah you know the, these drones are being put through the ringer and um yeah man it's 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 uneasy and there might be some people out there that say i've got 200 hours flown on my original Mavic Pro and I'm having no issues and if that's the case I mean that is awesome and I'd love to hear about that but at my current period of time my Mavic 2 Pro and my Inspire 2 is having uh, a little bit of issues so it's going to it's going to be time for me to make a decision whether I just want to recycle them you know uh, or maybe I want to hang on to them buy another one just in case but again I've got to I've got to do something so um, anyway thanks thanks you guys for coming listening to us We're going to be jumping back into the swing of things here over the next couple of weeks. Um, And be sure to stay tuned for the next episode because I think that that topic is going to tie in really well with this topic that we just had, that we just discussed. So yeah, Ken, anything else? No, that's, that's it, man. I think, uh, I think all is, all is well. Awesome. Yep. We'll talk to you guys next, uh, next Wednesday.